In this video, I have a sub $100 laser machine. It's the WizMaker Wand Mini two and a half watt laser machine. We're gonna check out if it's any good and if it's worth your time. And it really check this thing out. I'm gonna be pairing it up with my free favorite laser software. And then to bring everything all together to really see it in action, we're gonna be running a number of projects on this black poster board that has a white core to it. It's great for practicing new settings on new laser machines. I'm also going to do a slate coaster and then wrapping everything up with these wood planks. All this coming up in this video. Couple quick messages for you before we open up this box and check out whether this machine is worth the sub $100. First of all, this video, I do have it marked as a paid promotion. I'm not actually being paid by WizMaker to produce this video, but in full transparency, they did send me this machine for free so that I can share my real world experience with all of you. In this video, I don't have to say or do anything specific and I'm not here to sell you a machine. I don't do this in this video and I don't do it in any of my other videos. Instead, what I do is create these videos in my own style. I like to show the machine and show it in real world applications. And then I leave it up to you if this is going to be a good fit for you. The second thing that I've got for you is a question. What is orange and sounds like parrot? I'm gonna have the answer to that coming up later on in this video. And without any more Ritalin deficient babbling, let's get started with the box. And this thing, I have not opened this up to look ahead. This is still completely sealed from when I received it. So with that, let's get started and see what the machine looks like inside. The wand is a part of a series of machine wand and wand mini with laser power from two and a half watts to 12 watts. I have the two and a half watt version, which is why it's able to duck under the $100 barrier. It uses popular software like Free, Laser Gerbil, and the ever popular Lightburn software. There's also the mobile app for Apple and Android devices called BurnLab. Today, I'm going to use the unofficially supported CutLab X software. It's free, feature packed, and most of all, easy to use. The work area of my machine is going to be 155 by 135 millimeters. That's 6.1 by 5.3 inches. The machine is constructed of high quality aluminum rails for both the X and Y axes and other components include quality molded composite components. The laser module is centered around the metal chassis topped off with an eye-friendly laser shroud with a built-in focus gauge on the side. The spot size of the laser is super tiny at 0 0.04 millimeters by 0 0.04 millimeters, perfect for engraving detail. And that's where this machine really shines is engraving detail. The first thing that I noticed on this machine with it being under $100 is it arrives fully assembled with only placement of the laser module being needed. We went from unboxing to plugging it in in under five minutes. That I think is pretty amazing. Next up, let's get this connected up to the computer and check out the CutLab X software. Before I can connect the machine up to the computer, there is a driver called CH340 that does need to be installed on the computer so that it can talk to the laser machine. I'll have a link for that down in the video description for you. I've got that already installed on my computer and I've got the USB connection up to the computer. Power is on the machine and let's start CutLab X. And as soon as the software started up, the machine automatically homed. The computer already connected up to the machine. I didn't have to do anything except start the software. I don't think it gets any easier than that. And that's why on these mini machines and a lot of other machines, CutLab X is my go-to software. From here, I'll click on Start Creation. And here is the layout work area of the machine. A quick little tour. On the left hand side, I have a lot of drawing tools. And across the top, once I have multiple objects within my work area, 
I can start to align them to the top, the bottom, center, left, right, and so forth, and a number of other features. Cut Lab X also allows me to connect a rotary if my machine is compatible with one and also with a computer or excuse me, a camera system as well. Today we're not going to be doing any of that. For now, I'm going to load in my own graphic image and creating a project on a laser machine is really as easy as one, two, three. The first step is I'm going to load in some material like this black poster board into the machine, set the focus. Step two is to import a graphic image into the software. And step three is over here on the right hand side is I'm going to uh, assign a speed and a power level out to the laser machine. And from there I can hit the start button. Let's check out what all of this looks like. The first thing we're going to notice is I have some aluminum foil underneath the machine. That way I can protect my work table from the laser module. I simply drew out a piece of aluminum foil, folded it on top of itself, making sure that the dull side faces the laser. I've got my poster board and I'm just simply going to place it underneath the machine. And if it's kind of loose yet, I can always use some blue painter's tape, a little spot in each corner will keep the work material securely in place. I'll set the focus by turning down the focus arm on the side of the laser shroud. Once that's in the down position, I can loosen up the thumb screw and adjust the height of the laser until it touches. Once that's touching the work material, I can flip that focusing arm back up. Step one is all complete. Step number two, importing an image into Cut Lab X. For that, I'll simply click on this icon here for open file. With Cut Lab X, I can import JPEG files, PNG files, and the file that I have loaded in is an SVG. This will allow me to either cut it out, or in this case, I wanna simply do a line engraving. I can grab the corner of my graphic and resize it, move it anywhere I want within the work area, for now, I think I'll start out roughly in the middle. And right now the mode is set to line and I'm gonna do that to fill. That's gonna be that line engraving and now we see that it fills in quite a bit. And for the speed, I'm gonna start out with a speed of, let's say 1500 millimeters per minute and a maximum power level of 95%. The line interval for the millimeters or the line density is at 0.1, that's the default. Over scan, I can leave that at zero. And from here, I can hit the preview button and I'll watch the laser travel over the work material, making sure that the laser is actually over the work material. If it's not, I can either move my work material or move my graphic within the work area. That looks good and now I'm ready to put the glasses on and hit the start button and create our first project. first project's complete and this is what it looks like. I think that turned out pretty good and this black poster board really is my go-to material when I'm working with a brand new machine to gain some experience with the speeds and power levels. The next project is going to be this slate coaster and I'm going to shake things up a little bit more and switch from the Cut Lab X software over to Lightburn software. This machine is going to use the core version, the less expensive version of Lightburn, and it costs just as much as the machine. But I know many of you may have a larger machine where you're already using Lightburn software, and maybe you have a young one at home that you'd like them to get introduced on. They're basically their own mini laser machine, so you've already got Lightburn. Let's hop over to the computer and check out the next project. If you don't yet have Lightburn software and you just want to try it out, they do offer a free 30-day trial with all of the tools unlocked. Just like with Cut Lab X, our project is going to be easy as one, two, three, starting out with step one, placing the material in the machine and setting the focus. We saw that in the previous project, so I'm not going to go through that again. Step two is going to be importing an image into the software. Once again, that's pretty easy. I simply navigate to File, 
and import, and then I grab the, the image that I would like. Once again, Lightburn software is gonna be able to do JPEG images, PNG images, and SVGs, and a whole bunch more over the CutLab X software. I've loaded my image in, and I've sized it appropriately to fit on today's material. And step three, let's get some settings for engraving the slate coaster. I actually did a little mini test on the back. I did a little dot, that looks good. And my settings for that were 50 millimeters per second and a max power of 100%. And my line resolution is going to be 300 lines per inch. This looks good. I'm gonna get everything set up off camera and we'll start project number two. And by the way, if you're wondering how long this is going to take, Lightburn Software does have this little uh, TV preview button up here at the top. When I click on that, it is gonna run a simulation and it's going to estimate this project to take a little over 15 minutes. The second project is complete. The software estimated this to take a little over 15 minutes. It actually took just under 17 minutes. The second project confirms that, in fact, the WAN Mini really can engrave slate. We're now on to the third and final sample project, the wood blanks. I picked these up from the Dollar Tree, a six pack for about $1.50. It's a deal hard to beat. I found this fun little pattern. I think it's gonna look great on our wooden project. Same as before, we're going to use a one, two, three step for creating this project. Step one, I've got the material inside of the machine. The focus has been set. Step two, we just saw, I picked out a nice graphic. And step three, my settings, I bumped the speed up to 125 millimeters per second at a power level of 100%, and the lines per inch is still set at 300. Once again, all I need to do is put on my safety glasses and hit the start button, and we can start this last project. The third project is all complete. Let's check it out. This turned out great. And I think out of all three projects, this one is my favorite. The in-depth of the engraving is pretty shallow, but I can feel it just a little bit. The engraving time for this project took 56 minutes. That's right. This took nearly an hour to make. Now that I've ran three projects using two different softwares and actually off camera, I did run a third software package, that free laser gerbil. And now I've got some thoughts about the machine with, first of all, what do we think about a machine that is sub $100? Well, it came pre-assembled with only fitment of the laser module needing to be placed on the machine and Everything on it was pre-assembled correctly. It connected up to the machine, up to my computer right away. And all three packages, software packages, really didn't have a problem with the machine whatsoever. So in fact, a sub $100 machine does work. It is a two and a half watt laser. So we're gonna be pretty much limited to just engraving projects. I think if you wanna do some cutting, that's gonna be better suited for a higher wattage machine. but. As we saw with the last project, the small spot size with the smaller laser produces some pretty incredible detail. Some other thoughts that I have about the machine is with it being a mini machine, it is very portable and when it's not in use, it very easily stores out of the way. And one of the questions that we might have is, who would best benefit from a machine like this? And I think if there's somebody that is interested in 
kind of dipping their toes into the world of lasers, but they don't want to make a huge investment, this would definitely be a route to go. And just because it's sub $100, I don't think that it is a cheap machine. It looks very well constructed. I didn't have any problems with it whatsoever in any of the software packages. I didn't have any problems with it setting up the materials underneath the machine. It always did what I told it to do, which is seems pretty rudimentary, but there's some machines out on the market that sometimes they do weird and buggy things. And in the limited time that I saw in today's video, I didn't see any of those things crop up. So it's been performing very solidly for me. Well, it all can't be great, right? Well, I think we'd be correct in that realm as well. One of the big things about this machine is it is only two and a half watts. That's how the price is able to be reduced so much on it. With that lower wattage, projects are going to run much slower. They are going to take a long time. This last one, it took nearly an hour. If I ran this on like a 10 or a 12 watt machine, we'd see that time go down significantly, something down to about 10 minutes. So just be aware, if you're looking at this machine, make sure you have time to have your projects being made and be around your projects while they're being made as well. And that's a great segue into safety. Whenever we're running our laser machine, we do want to be around it to make sure that we don't inadvertently start any fires. And the laser machine, with the entry price point that it has, still has some great safety features. I just mentioned starting fires with the machine. This does have a flame detect built into the machine. It also has a tilt detect that if the machine tilts too much, the laser will stop firing. I hope that this video has answered a lot of your questions on the Wand Mini by Wizmaker. One question I still have to answer for all of you is the question from the beginning of the video. Do you know the answer? What's orange and sounds like parrot? Carrot! <laughs> I heard that one the other day and I thought I've got to share that in one of the videos with all of you. Thanks for joining me in this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, help support this channel by giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel. And not only is it a great way to help this channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like you. And until we meet again in the next video, I am Greg from the Laser Channel, where we learn, create, and share. <laughs>